What is going on guys, Steven here, and today I want to show you how to unbreak every China phone, also when it's not detected anymore by the PC. Now for this you're gonna need your phone, an USB cable, a computer with Windows, your factory stock ROM, or a backup of your stock ROM, or a 100% working similar ROM. Without a working ROM it's impossible to revive it, so make sure you got your stock ROM. Also you maybe need a screwdriver to open it up, but that's just if it's not detected anymore by the computer. Also you will have to download several tools on your PC, but you can find all these things on chinadevices.com and you can find the link also down below in the description. Ok, so that was the intro and now let's get started guys. Ok ladies and gentlemen, we're now on the computer and now I want to tell you what you have to download. First of all you should have a look at the flashing package. And my flashing package is in the Mega Drive, so the link is down below in the description, just check that out. And it will look somehow like this. So in the flashing package, um, you will find the flash tools, and they are really important. Now here you will find different versions, and usually you should start with the latest version, which is currently 5.135, okay? So just download all the flash tools, and make sure you place them somewhere on your desktop, okay? The second thing you have to download are the drivers. And the drivers are really important because if the preloader driver is not correctly installed, SP Flash tool will not detect your smartphone and you cannot flash the new ROM to your smartphone. So make sure you also download the MTK65XX preloader drivers. And you can find them here in the drivers folder. And here you have to go to all MTK USB drivers. Then here you go to all MTK again. And here you should find the manual installation files for the MT65XX preloader and also the newer ones for Windows 7 and Windows 8 64 bits. And I'm going to use them. If you don't have 64 bit, you can use them. And you're just going to place it somewhere on the desktop because we will need it, okay? So it's now here on my desktop. Then the next thing you should download is USB DView. If you have already installed some preloaded drivers, there may be a mess up with the drivers. So we should get a clean driver folder and to clean our drivers, we're going to use USB DView. So also download that and place it on your desktop. Now that are the tools and drivers you will need, but you will also need your stock ROM. If you already have an MTK Droid Tools backup, you can find the backup here in the MTK Droid Tools folder. So make sure you're going to use that. If you don't have a backup, then you should check out needrom.com. So first of all, you have to check out your model number and your brand. And then you're going to enter here your brand and model number. Just go to search and just check if the smartphone is in the database. Now needrom.com is a very huge database. They have many ROMs and in order to download something, you have to register. Then you can log in and download the ROM. So that's completely free. You don't have to worry about that. Now, if your ROM is not on needrom.com, you have to maybe ask the seller, check out Google, check out XDA developers. And yeah, sometimes it's really hard to find a ROM when the phone is very unknown. There are so many brands in China, it's just incredible. Now, what you can do is, if you cannot find the ROM on needrom.com, is go to chinadevices.com, ask, write a new thread, just register on China Devices and post a new thread. Maybe someone has the same phone, so that's our help forum. You can go to um, ROM requests, it's at the bottom, and you can try to post a request and see if someone got the same phone. And I've also written a short guide on how to find a ROM for very unknown phones, but sometimes yeah, it's really hard to find the stock ROM. But you have to do it because without the correct stock ROM you cannot revive the smartphone. Ok guys, so now that's it, and now before we begin we should clean the drivers on our system to get a really fresh start on the PC, so let's go. Ok, now to clean the drivers on our system, we're going to use USB DView, and as always the download link is down below in the description as I've told you before. So just open up the folder and just run the USB DView.exe file as administrator, so that's really important. Ok, so now it is open. And now here you can see all the devices and drivers on your system. Now it's really important to search for MediaTek because that's the chipset our Chinese smartphones are using, okay? 
And now you have to make sure that you remove all those media tag entries. So you can just mark them here with the shift button. And then you go here to X and that means disconnect. And after they are disconnected, so um, there is no green light, you can also uninstall them. So just go here to uninstall selected devices. Now you go to yes. And now you should also make sure that no phone is connected to the computer because otherwise you will get unknown phone. Okay, the preloader drivers are now uninstalled. You will also find maybe MT65XX preloader. Be sure to uninstall that too because that's another preloader driver. Okay, now the MTK preloader drivers are uninstalled. But just to be sure, that should actually be ADB drivers. But if you can find entries which contain your smartphone name, like here THL or THL5000, be sure to remove it just to be sure and get a clean driver folder on your system. Okay, that's it. And now I want to show you how to get your smartphone back connected. Okay, so now it's time to get the smartphone recognized by the computer. And what we're trying to do now is bringing the smartphone into META mode. META mode is a different mode of the preloader, which bypasses the actual preloader and allows you to re-download the preloader and then re-download the whole ROM. Now, META mode can be triggered on the most China phones by holding volume down while you connect it to the computer. So actually, what you have to do now is you press volume down, then you keep it pressed and then you connect your smartphone to the computer and see if it get recognized. Now if that doesn't work you should try a different button like volume up, maybe power plus volume down, that depends on the smartphone. Also some smartphones have a reset button as I will show you later. But if you cannot get it connected like this, so with holding one of the buttons and also keep pressing it, then we have to do a hardware mod. But if you have a device with integrated battery, just like the THL5000 or any iPhone clone, you have to be careful because those devices usually have a reset button. Here on the THL5000 you can easily see it, but some iPhone clones have the reset button between the volume buttons and it's very hard to find. So make sure you also check if your device has integrated battery and if it's integrated so you cannot take it out. Be sure to check if there's a reset button to trigger preloader or META mode. So please check that out guys. And now let's go to the computer because I want to show you how that looks like. Oh yeah, we're now on the computer and now it's time to connect the smartphone to the computer and let's see if it gets detected by the device manager. So also make sure that you have the USB driver somewhere on your desktop so you can access them really quickly. Now to get to the device manager you first of all have to go to the control panel. If you're using Windows 8, you can also press the Windows button on the keyboard plus R and just type here control panel to get into it. Now you have to go to system and in system there should be device manager, okay? So now we are in the device manager and we just keep this window here open. Now, as I've told you before, just make sure you connect your smartphone without battery as always and Try to hold volume down or any of the volume buttons, maybe also with the power button, to see if it gets connected, okay? And I also want to show you um, what it does if you have a disconnecting and reconnecting preloader. So let me just quickly show you how it looks on my smartphone. So it's now connected and should um, pop up here on the ports and that's completely normal, okay? And the problem is it reconnects, disconnects, reconnects and now the flash always gets interrupted and that's a huge problem. But now if I press the volume down button, you should see that it stops. And what it actually does, it switches to MTK USB port or VCOM port. And that is META mode, so that's what we need guys. And yeah, let me disconnect that. And for instance, if I now keep holding the volume button, and I just connect it, then I should just get the MTK USB port. And now we're good to go and now I can actually flash the smartphone because the MediaTek USB port stops after time after um, downloading the preloader and then you can download a new preloader and also download the whole ROM. Okay, so if you cannot get it back connected like this, then you also have to do a hardware mod. And you also should install the USB driver. So let me quickly 
I'm show you how to do that. Now, after you have connected the smartphone and after you can see it in the device manager, you have to quickly right click it. So you will get update driver software. I don't know why, but my mouse keeps freezing when it reconnects. And then you go to browse my computer for driver software. And here you go to browse. And now you point to the folder which contains the drivers. For me, it's here on the desktop, new inst Windows 7, 8. And yeah, I'm just choosing that folder here. Oh man, the mouse keeps freezing all the time. That's so annoying. And I have here the AMD folder, so the 64 bits folder, and I'm just using this and it says you're up to date. Now, if you get that or if it does not install the driver, you have to um, go back and you just go back by clicking here at this arrow and here you go to let me pick from a list. And now here you go to have disk. And what you have to do here is choose the in file manually. So you actually just go into the driver folder and here choose the Android in file. And yeah, it should be in the main folder, so sorry, it's right over here. And then you go to OK. Now you may get a list and here choose the MediaTek 65XX preloader. But you also may get this driver is not signed. And if you can see that, it's really important to disable driver signature enforcement. There are a lot of tutorials online on how to do that on Windows 7 or Windows 8. But it's important to do it because otherwise the driver doesn't get installed. And that's also the problem with the automatic driver installation because sometimes it says correctly installed but actually it isn't installed. So please do it manually to get the best result. And now let's have a look at the hardware mod. Now this mod is just for smartphones which cannot get into META mode by pressing any buttons and which can't get a stable preloader connection. Now you have to disassemble your smartphone until you can see the main board. What you also need is a cable or something to bridge two very small contacts. And I'm just using here my multimeter in continuity mode and so I can also bridge two contacts on the main board. So that's actually pretty easy and also pretty safe. But just make sure that you use continuity mode on your multimeter so you have to switch it until you can see something like this. And if you now bridge your two contacts, then you will hear a beep on the multimeter and then you know that's correct. Okay, so now you can actually bridge two contacts on the main board. But now we have to find out which contacts to bridge. So we have to find the test point on the main board and we have to bridge it with ground. So we're just going to ground one of the test points, but you don't know which test point because they're not labeled. Just make sure you connect them to ground, which should be labeled, and don't connect anything which is called plus or vbut or anything to ground because then you will short something. So just make sure you check all the unlabeled points here, which you can see in the upper corner. And we're going to brute force now which point the test point is. Now, I just did it this way. First of all, you should connect the smartphone to the computer using the USB cable. You can see it right over here. And that makes sure that you know, was it the correct contact or not when you bridge it? Because you will see that the MTK USB VCOM port pops up in the device manager. And now you have to find the ground point, which you can see right over here. It's labeled with GND, that means ground. And yeah, here we'll also see VBAT or something, a plus. Please don't short the contact, so don't connect them to ground. Now just go through those golden points here. Now you just have to connect one after each other to ground until the MTK USB VCOM port pops up in the device manager. So let's just put one end of the cable to GND and the other end of the cable goes to one of the test points. And when you can see the MTK USB VCOM port, you have the correct point and you can stop, okay? And it's some kind of brute forcing, so I'm not sure which point it is. I will just start with one of the test points here, just ground it. If it's not the correct point, I will just go to the next point. And actually I found out it's the golden test point, which is very close to the volume rockers. So I think it's somehow connected and that is also why the volume down button triggers the META mode. But that's only on newer phones. On some older smartphones you may have to find another test point and you can also solder bridge that point. So you just solder that point to ground but after the flash you have to remove the solder bridge because otherwise the smartphone will not boot. So if I now ground the point it pops up as MTK USB VCOM port and I'm ready to flash the smartphone and now I'll show you how to do that. And what I forgot to tell you is when you have a device with integrated battery just like an iPhone clone, 
you may have to desolder the battery in order to flash it correctly. Because I've had serious problems, for instance, with the Neo M1 to flash it and unbreak it because the battery is integrated, so I had to remove it, open it up, and then it worked. Okay, so now let's have a look on how to flash the smartphone. Now to flash the smartphone, you need the stock ROM and the flashing tool, and your smartphone has to be properly detected by the computer. Now first of all, you should check out the flash tool folder, and we're going to start with the latest version of SP flash tool, which is currently 5.13 or something, okay? Now be sure to run it as administrator, that's really important, okay? Now you will get there is no scatter file or something, just press the OK button and wait until it has opened up. Now you go here to scatter loading. And now you have to browse for your stock ROM folder, and in the stock ROM folder there should be the um, scatter file, okay? So where is it? Desktop, stock ROM. And here you just load up the scatter for your smartphone. When everything is correct, you should get here a list where everything is ticked and also there should be a valid path for all the images. Now, it depends on what you have done before you have bricked the smartphone. If you flash the wrong preloader, then you first of all should flash the preloader and then download the rest of the ROM. So first of all, you should untick everything else except of the preloader. And then you flash the preloader, then you get a working preloader again, and then you just download the rest of the ROM manually. Also, it is maybe good to format the smartphone. If you go here to the Format tab, you just choose here Auto Format Flash, Format Flash, except Bootloader. But only do that if you get a PMT error or if all the other things which I tell you right now do not work, okay? First of all, we try to download the ROM. And for instance, let's say I have flashed a wrong ROM, including the preloader. That means the preloader may be broken. Now you check the preloader and you point to the preloader here, which should be in your stock ROM folder, okay? So it's right over here. And now we're going to download the preloader. So just hit the download button. And now you have to connect the smartphone like you did before on how to get META mode, okay? So I just keep pressing the volume down button and now I connect the smartphone. So it should now be detected by the computer, red bar, MediaTek USB port. Now it disconnects and the preloader comes back and the preloader gets flashed. So now the preloader should be back working and we can check that really easily. So now if we reconnect it, the preloader actually should be in the device manager and maybe it also stops disconnecting, okay? Okay, so in this case not, but the preload is back and it's working. And now we can download the rest of the ROM. So what you do now is you uncheck the preloader and you make sure that you check all that stuff here. Sometimes it's not needed to flash cache and user data, but after format you have to flash them because otherwise you will get a boot loop, okay? Also, after the flash, if you have a boot loop, check out my boot loop tutorial. You should go into the recovery and wipe cache and user data. There may be a problem with that, okay? So you just tick all that. Now you hit download again and connect the smartphone normally. There we go. Now you don't need to hold volume down or something because it gets detected as MediaTek preloader. It's now downloading the ROM and this can take up to 10, 15 minutes depending on the internet, uh, on the USB speed connection and also on the ROM size and the smartphone. So just be patient, wait until the yellow bar is at 100% and then you should get a message, download was completed, flash successful or something. So we'll just do a cut right over here and after that we will continue. Okay, now after the flash was successful, you should get here a message, download OK, you can close that. You can also close SP flash tool and now you can disconnect your smartphone. Just before you reboot it, make sure you reconnect the battery, because otherwise it may won't boot. And if you have solar bridged the contacts on the mainboard, be sure to remove that bridge, otherwise it won't boot too. Now there is a possibility that you are stuck in a boot loop. That means the boot logo keeps looping and you can't get into Android. Now what you should try is go back to the SP Flash tool and format the whole flash except bootloader. That means it will keep your preloader, it will clear your flash, and then you just re-download the ROM. 
Also there is a possibility that you may have flashed the wrong ROM. And also you should try to enter the recovery and wipe cache and user data. So maybe there is a problem with the cache or user data partition. And after that you actually should be able to boot if the ROM was correct. Now if you get an error in SP flash tool like 4032 usually means wrong ROM. Something which is 8032 or something is usually a driver issue. You can check that out in the link down below in the description. I have some errors listed and you can see what they mean. But you also should try different versions of the flash tool. And do it like this, so start with version 5 and then you go back until 3.1 or something, okay? So go from the latest to the oldest SP flash tool version and also check which error codes you get. And if you still have issues, then check out chinadevices.com, post a new thread and I will try to have a look at it as soon as possible. But please stop sending me emails. My email folder is full with bricked smartphones and I can't write back. It's so much, I don't have time for that. So please post it on chinadevices.com and I and my team will try to reply as soon as possible. So it's a big community, we are growing and please check it out. And yeah, that was my tutorial on how to unbreak every China phone. I hope I didn't forget anything, but I'm pretty sure that you can revive your MTK phone. I have flashed about 100, 150 smartphones and only one was really heartbreaked because the motherboard was broken. But I could get back all the smartphones. So don't lose your faith, just be patient, chill out, drink a beer, grab yourself a cup of coffee, read the tutorials, watch the video all over again and I'm pretty sure that you can get your smartphone back to life. So as always guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.